Hello everybody, welcome to the PBO Neon Power Rankings here in Season 7. I am Aiden, aka the St. Louis Galios, and I have with me today the retired Za of the New York Malamars. Happy in retirement, ready to rank some teams. Alright, let's go ahead and get right into this. So first of all, we have the Dallas Dynamax. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and start us off with what, uh, what you think about this team right here? Okay. So we know, uh, Dallas came in late from what I remember. We're yes, clearly they're... trying to build a rain team here, but we've definitely gone overkill on the waters. I think I counted six waters here. No steel type, no fairy type, uh, no ground type on the rain team. No electric type to take advantage of the rain itself. So walking wake on rain is, it's not bad. It's okay. It has hurricane, so it can get use out of, it still gets, the hydro steam boost still happens in the rain. It just doesn't get the protosynthesis rain. I think Kingdra, out of all the swift swimmers we have available, um, it's not, I don't think it's as good as Floatzel or Barrascuda. So I think at, just as the start, I would change that out. I'm happy we finally have Araquanid as a Terra Captain, but on this particular style, I, th I think honestly the Inteleon might have been better. And then if you wanted just a pure water type that was going to abuse the rain, uh, I guess Inteleon with uh, Terra would be pretty good, but we still have Keldeo sitting out there, which would probably work better and give you a dual typing. Uh, we have a Zoomeril out there, which would give you the fairy typing for the rain. And um, we also have things on the team that I think are just a little bit suboptimal, especially without the Terra. Like Hisuian Bravier, I think is okay on this team because it can spam the Hurricanes. We could go Scarf and have decent speed. But then just make that the Terra Captain over the Salazzle. I don't have, like, you still need a Poison type and Fire type on a Draft Rain team, I don't think is bad. But I would recommend, oh, we do have Dreadnought here as a, as a second Swift Swimmer that is okay. I still think the other ones are better. Uh, and we have the worse rain setter at least in singles and now i think doubles is caught up with that polytoad uh chestnut's fine i don't mind it here but if you're going to run this team dallas i would highly recommend you one go get a ground type gastrodon is out there who's pretty good for this play style uh you need a steel iron crown was dropped uh it's out there it's pretty solid um other than that, it's just very overkill into a style that's already super predictable, and I don't think it's really taking advantage of the weather. And then if you're not running weather with this team, I don't really know what's going to happen. So if no changes are made on this squad, I think it's going to be a hard road ahead for Dallas. Yeah, so, so I mean, the one thing I, I do see is that uh, Raccoonid is does have Terra Ground available to it. However, whenever you run a Raccoonid, especially on a rain team, you just want to be clicking Terra Water, liquidation and just hitting things with the funny little spider um another thing is like as as i mentioned move the probably move the terra off of salazzle and onto something else um that'll probably use your points more efficiently like i think dreadnought can be a really really good terra captain um whenever especially if you combine it with like shell smash and like terra dark uh with like strong jaw and you uh hit it with like crunches and stuff i think that can be uh really really good really strong um but I also think just moving, if you were to keep Kingdra, moving Terra to Kingdra can also really benefit you as well, um, considering it gives it that much needed power boost that it wants, uh, along with like, you know, if you may run like a D Dance set or if you just want to run like Specs with Draco and, and Hydro Pump and, and, you know, Surf and, and whatnot. But I do think switching some pieces out, um, like, probably either the dreadnought or the kingdra kingdra for like fair scooter floats or even dreadnought for like a ground type or something or if you're not going to tear the inteleon i do like inteleon as a mon but um i think if you're running with all the waters you should probably swap it out for something that gives you more type coverage something as a, as a better defensive profile um and if we're talking about moving terrors around as well low kicks is right there uh tinted limbs terra bug terra dark um, first impression, knockoff, stuff like that. It, it hits super, super hard and something that not a lot of things can switch into. And so um, maybe with some moving of Terras, a, a dropping of, of a Mon or two uh, could, could really benefit this team. But until that happens, I think this team just kind of lacks the, the power and the, the type uh, variety that it, it really wants to, to be as good as it yeah. should be. 
for the especially the second second half of these teams, I'll give some recommendations because this is our uh, more beginner or you know startup division. Yes. Uh, you probably need a fairy. Lefable is out there, still solid, uh, and a Zoomeril if you want to match the weather. You want something that can abuse the weather. That's there. Um, if you want the flying type and Braviary is a little bit too slow, if you can't put the tear on it, I think on this style, Iron Jugulus could be good, and it is something that we're letting Terra now. We mentioned both the other Swift swimmers. I think that Floatzel or Barracuda is just straight up better than Kingdra or Dreadnought, with or without the Terra. Like with Barracuda, you can run without the Terra, and it's still extremely threatening. Um, and then you really want to steal type. Uh, uh, Crown is out there. I think it's a little bit too few points just in general, so that's something you might want to look at. Alright, and with that we shall move on to number 13 the Richmond Raging Bolts. Yet another team that is trying to run rain. Um, I think this one is slightly better as it didn't fully commit to rain, but as it looks, it, it didn't commit enough to rain. In my opinion, obviously you still have Thunderous Theory in. I believe Wild Bolt Storm gets boosted to 100% accurate in rain, which is very, very nice. Um, Bear Tick as your as your Swift Swimmer feels kind of bad, especially when there is Bear Scuda and and Floats out there, like we mentioned with the last team. Um, I do like our Chaladon here. Uh, very good defensive piece. Electro Shot can get out of hand very, very quickly if you let it. Um, something I've thought of doing is running like Scarf Electro Shot with a team that has like a ground that can be easily either whittled down or, or killed, especially with something like a bundle, um, being right there. I think, uh, that could be pretty funny, but having, a a couple other pieces like Seru Ledge, um, a spa throw, I think a spa throw can be really good in certain spaces. Seru Ledge is also very good. I feel like if you were to tear it, it'd be that much better. Uh, Sarah Ledge is a very, very threatening Terra Captain. Um, the removal is also kind of eh with Bramblegast and Hitmon top. I'm one of the best Bramblegast supporters, but uh, that mod just doesn't always do what you really want it to do, unfortunately. And then Hitmon top just doesn't get anything to hit dark or ghosts. I mean, um, so someone like any any good spin blocker just kind of shuts Hitmon top down uh, completely, and so it, it kind of feels bad um, when you're trying to when you're trying to stack those hazards. Um, but, uh, yeah, what do you think? So, I do think this one is better than the last one we saw. It takes advantage of the rain a little bit more. We still, again, we have no fairy, um, which is just a generally good time. Again, why, why does that matter for people that are hearing this if this is your first time in Drift? Getting just dragon moves spammed against you, like, yes, Reggie Steel resists it, but, again, if you have one thing to chip down, and people can just click Outrage at you after they set up a couple of spikes... It's a lot more powerful when you see it happen to you and you realize, oh, I can't stop this from happening. Um, our Chaladon I like. I used this last season. The thing is, when you have this, it's good there's a Registeel backing it up because our Chaladon, unfortunately, due to the typing, it's difficult for it to function as a Dragon or as a Steel because it's both. And standard play on Ladder, Dragon Steel is really strong in Draft. I don't really think it's that great unless it's backed up by something. Uh Therian is good. I think that so this spot, this flying spot, is ideally Tornadus Therian or Zapdos. I still think Thunderous Therian can do things, like it's still good, although I do think it's the third best option in that sense between those three guys for that spot. Bundle Rain is funny. I don't know that Bundle really like because it still has to hit the hydro pump, so I'm not gonna say it doesn't benefit, but it doesn't have any other water move from what I remember one you would ever even consider using. So it's definitely, it, it's strong for sure, but um, still a better abuser of the rain if that's the strategy we're going to go with, which we pretty hard committed to here. Um, having the Sarah Legend and not being Terra, especially when you have the points, because you, if you really want to run the Baratic and you don't want to drop it for a different Swift Swimmer, you can still run Baratic Sarah Ledge and like then have a mode outside the rain, or you could be cheesy and like be tear of water on Sarah Ledge because there's two of these and like that's not a completely useless typing for it uh Bramble Gas is for like no it's not great removal but Bramble Gas at least outside like as uh Solgaleo has mentioned Bramble Gas threatens uh ghosts right which is pretty good for a spinner it, it can threaten ghosts outside Hitmontop which cannot in any way right so like your Bramble Gas could in, th in theory threaten a Goldango it could threaten uh 
a Spectrier. Like, they don't really want to come in on it. So I think it's okay. I think a Spothra could do some cool stuff. Like, I could see some interesting applications for this team. But as somebody who's run Rain, I don't think this benefits enough for the Rain or has a strong enough mode outside of it. So I think it's lackluster in both respects. But it has a more thorough, thought-out plan than a team before it, which is why we have it at, thir at 13. Yeah, um... So, I mean, and a lot of, of the a, a lot of the pickups, as I mentioned before, it's really the same for this team. Like, yeah. um, you're good. I could keep Reggie Steel, and I can deal with Reggie Steel. But you st you don't run with no fairy. And look at the more standard Swift Swimmers because you seem to have the points and even the Terror points because you could run Baratic and Barascuta, or you could run Baratic and something else. So you have the points. Yeah, um, I think. Maybe getting like Bramble Gust is a is a fine spinner. It doesn't it isn't the greatest. It does have that speed tier to threaten some slower ghosts that do want to spin block. Um, and I do like the hit, the hitmon top intimidate, but I think maybe looking to to get a slight bit of better removal if there's any out there. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but maybe looking to get a little bit of that. Maybe something with like defog instead. Uh, could be good. But I I think yeah, just going along with uh, kind of was also just swap out something that is Terra for something a little bit more offensively threatening with that Terra that has Swift Swim if you're going to commit to rain or if you don't want to commit to rain uh like nearly as much in case you want to go like I don't know some maybe like manual rain strategies which would be pretty funny um drop like Pelipper for for that uh fairy type that backs up your defensive core but uh looking at the team I think picking up a fairy is definitely something you should look into uh yeah and also just now just just so we're being thorough this also has no ground and so yes. when we're running rain, guys, that means we're going to have overlap. Uh, yes, we have a thunder. We have an electric immunity and thunderous, but it doesn't always work the way you think that it will because it's if it's something out there that's faster that tries to vault switch in you, then you switch this in. It can still just hit you with another move, and it's it's extremely prediction reliant, right? Yeah. So um, also, if you're not running boots thunderous, this is something that's switching in, as opposed to a ground that's switching on the electric move and is resisting the rocks. This is taking damage from the rocks if you're not running boots. And if you're running boots thunderous, like, you don't really want to be running defensive thunderous. Maybe AV, maybe specs, maybe scarf, right? So um, you definitely want to ground, definitely a ground on the on the rain team. Amoongus is out there also if you just want, like, a grass type that's not Bramble Gus. There's, there's a lot of rain pieces out there for both of these rain teams that are still available. Just look up some more standard construction and check out what's in the free agent pool. Yeah. And with that, we will move on to number 12, the Uncertain Unknowns. Um, go, ahead, go ahead and start us off with this one. Okay, so we're looking at the Uncertain Unknowns. This one is much more of a standard team, which makes it a cut above the last two, which I think will both, without changes, struggle mightily just based on team composition. Mm -hmm. This team just, I mentioned this a couple of times in the Stargazer video, I don't know how this adds up to the points. It just seems very, maybe it's because there's a number of things at 90-ish and not a 10-point mon at the end, which I think is the optimal way to draft in this format. But the power level of this team past them, I like Ting Lu, but even that's debatable if that's like a high, high-level guy, like that's under 150. And Meow, uh, I think is a top-level guy, like we might even have this a little bit underrated in general, but it seems like we're relying a lot on Meow, one for speed, that's our only thing over one. Uh, we have Halucha, but this is non-terra, non-terrain Halucha. So I don't love that as something that comes every week. I like the stab combo, but Halucha's stats without setup are actually not really that great. Yeah. So I'm. Um, it's there, yes. I think he's 116, and Meow is up there around 120-ish. I don't know the number off the top Halucha's of my head. Halucha's 118. I think Meow is like, I want to say 123 for whatever reason. Yeah, it's a, yeah they're, they're about the... They're about ish the same so the speed's not terrible here but i don't know i don't think halucha is that viable and i don't love hasui and zoroark like i think it's funny and it can do stuff sometimes but i don't view it as like a really viable guy especially when there's not a lot of offensive threats for it to mask as here because like offensively what are you really scared like incineroar actually does a lot of damage incineroar like it's a good terror captain kilowattril is good it's a good terror captain but this is another thing I mentioned in the Stargazer video. I feel like if you're, we opened up so many better Terras that while Kilowattrell in the old format was one of the better ones, I don't think it is now. 
And while I like Incineroar, it benefits from Terra, it's not really going off because of it, right? Unless, unless yeah. we're doing, like, power trip setup, which probably isn't that great. <laughs> so this team, I wouldn't say there's anything super wrong with it typing-wise. Like, there's nothing that jumps out at me. There's Dragon, there's Poison, there's Water, there's Fairy, there's Steel. Although the Steel is Fortress, so I'm going to stand in for Ben here and say Fortress is really bad. <laughs> um and we have Hazard Stack with Ting Lu. We unfortunately have no, we have a Ghost again to protect the Hazard Stack, but it's not a sturdy one at all. Um, and we do have we have Hatterene to protect. That doesn't stop Defog. It just bounces it back. Uh, essentially, what I would say with this team is it's not bad. I just think you're going to have to cook some stuff up to win consistently with this because the other teams are just way better than it. So it's more just uh, a very plain Jane-ish team to me. Yeah. And uh, having Hatterene as your fairy, it definitely it definitely does work. Um, however, because it's so slow, um, even even the slower dragons um, can everything's can faster it. than Hatterene. Yeah, everything's yeah, faster. Everything's faster so, than Hatterene. So having it as your fairy, Hatterene is Hatterene is slower than Torkoal. <laughs> having Hatterene as your fairy, it, it it feels a little bad. Um, it definitely gives you the typing. You have your fairy dragon steel core, but as we've mentioned, uh, fortress as a steel, uh, not that great. Uh, definitely a feel bad moment. Same with uh, Hatterene as your fairy. Um, Dragology, I think, is actually a really good. Something I've wanted to try, but once again, it's also very, very slow. Um, which is a, which is a very big theme for this team. Besides your Meow, your Kilowattrol, your Halucha, um, there isn't a ton that's like super fast. Um, Zoroark will probably see it a lot of times when it whenever it wants to do damage to something, it, it kind of needs to be Scarf. Um, luckily, it has that sort of trickery that you can like bluff it as a as a Meow Scarada. Um, but a lot of the time, something like a U-turn can randomly catch it astray on a switch in, um, or something along those lines and, and kind of break, break that strategy. Um, and as well, um, some abilities can get that away, but I like Swampert as the ground. Uh, that's, that's something I do like. Swampert is something I've really wanted to try. Unfortunately, once again, it is slow, um, and having it be your water and your ground feels a little bit bad. Um. Especially because a lot of most electric types do get Grass Knot, uh, which sometimes might force you into being like Rendo, especially um, when there's a Ting Lu around. Uh, you have some switch ins to it, but if those get chipped down with like a few predictions, it's, it's going to be really tough. Um, but overall, I think you have solid pieces and all that, but I just don't think it. it kind of stacks up to the power level of what some of the other teams later on this list uh kind of have uh in this in this format yeah just so well i'm looking at some of this stuff uh we do have terra hatterene available this season terra hatterene could be really good with one terra type it kind of limits it a little bit even just basic terra fairy i think would be okay the standard is water that resists the steels and it becomes quite a setup threat even a trick room threat so you could do some some trick room stuff with Hatterene and then uh, Incineroar and Ting Lu. So you could do some early damage with Hatterene with its own trick room set. Then you have trick room healing wish later in the game to bring back an Incineroar that wants the Terra. Like you could do some interesting stuff. Uh, even the Dragalgy is kind of set up for a trick room mode with the Hatterene. So uh, maybe um, I don't mind having the extra speed on Kilowatt Trow, but I think in Paldea Dex, Meow is probably fast enough as the top guy. Yeah. So maybe if you could move the Kilowatt Trow out and the Fortress out, get a better steal like Iron Crown and bring in maybe another flying type with Defog, and then change the Hatterene to the Terra, I think I'd be relatively interested in that as just something that was a more viable strategy. Uh, cause that right now I feel like with this team, you're, you're, you're definitely bringing like Fortress every single week. And I just don't know. It's just not that viable. There's too many things that get stuck on the field. Um, so may maybe look at something like that and try to use the Hatterene offensively. Cause we've seen it. Me and, uh, the Alakazams have run this Hatterene trick room life orb set a lot. It's actually pretty good. Uh, so take a look at that in the builder sometimes. And with that, we'll move on to number 11, the Kaborka Gengars. And so this team, we talked about it a little bit beforehand. This team looks like it has every different weather mode you could imagine except for snow. 
However, like in, in the pieces it has, however, it has none of them. Like you look at Sun, you got Raging Bolt, you got Scream Tail, you got R Believe, you got a Lolan Executor. Great Sun Core. Unfortunately, there's no Sun. Uh, besides Manual Sun, but that isn't really super viable in draft. Then you have your Rain Core with like Ogre Pond Water, Raging Bolt, Overquill, Coquavel, um, and then no Rain. And then Sand, you got Excadrill, Corviknight, Cloth, and then still no Sand. Um, so while I do like your Terror types a lot, Alolan Executor and Cloth, I feel like can um, can do some really, really cool things, have some niche things, and even Morgrem be like a niche screen setter for Ogre Pond Wellspring. I, I did that last season. It worked out decently. Um, Scream Tail, uh, I really do like, uh, especially with Terra. Being able to Terra out of Fairy Psychic uh, is pretty good for it. Um, and then Raging Bolt, uh, Wellspring, Exodrill seems like a really, really strong core. Um, extra drill without sand, obviously, uh, it's still very, very good. Extra drill, a good mon, um, but I feel like it it lacks what it really wants uh, with sand. Um, so, and and because of that, I, I think that brings us down a little bit. Uh, but overall, the team looks very good. It is a little slow, um, and especially like you look at Screamtail, it is fast, but it's not super threatening offensively. Um, if you've been around for a minute, you probably have seen Mug try to do some some stored power, calm mind, um, like protosynthesis, like defense shenanigans. Um, she's done that a lot, and it's worked out pretty well. Uh, but other than that, I think this team is just is really slow, um, and it, it's going to have a hard time trying to keep up some of the faster teams. Uh, it, it'll be able to withstand the hits. I just don't know if it'll be able to dish them all back out the way that it that it really wants to. So without looking at like really thoroughly at the free agent pool, I think this is the team that could most easily move way up the list because Ogre Pond Water, Raging Bolts, Quaquavel are really good. Like I think all three of those guys are very, very dangerous things that have to be heavily accounted for when you play a team. I don't know that there's... I'm not going to say there's never a reason, but I don't know that there's much of any reason to have Excadrill and Corviknight. Because, like, if we have non-Sand Excadrill, I mean, it's it's not that it can't operate, but then, like, we probably got it to be a spinner or a ground. But then we have Corviknight also for removal. And both of those are 150 points. So I feel like you could take those and, like, Cloth, and then you have 200 more points to make this team... So with something better because i just don't think you need excadrill and corviknight um it, maybe there is maybe they have a reason for it and i need to really sit down and look at the type chart to understand but um i just i don't think that you need both of these guys if you need another ground i'm sure there's another one you could get for like less points that w w it fits a speed tier or um because it could, could quit. you already have two spinners you already have defog you already have a steel type so I it's just I would look at that because you have a lot of extra guys. You have uh Cloth and a Lolan Executor. I like a Lolan Executor as a terror captain with the trick room stuff, but I still feel like our belief is just better. Like I think it's just better and you have the points for it to be the terror captain. I think uh we've seen multiple times in PBO and PBO, PBO adjacent leagues that set up Scream Tail is good. But if you're really not planning on running set up Screamtail, I think it's a waste of the Terra because like it wants to be a fairy, like it's already a defensive thing. Like you, it, if you're gonna make it a water or a pure fairy, I, I'm sure it can do something. But as a 110 Terra captain, I just feel like unless you really are all in on like Terra set up Screamtail, I feel like there's just other things that are probably better. And as Solgaleo's mentioned, it's a little bit slow. So Screamtail, I think, is a little bit faster than Ogre Pond, maybe like 112 or so. Maybe I'm even remembering that wrong and it's not over 110. But, yeah, I um, it's over 110, but it's close. Yeah, I think it's like 111. It's somewhere around there, right? But still, we're not going to see much Scarf Screamtail. And remember, Ogre Pond can't have Choice Scarf. So you're really lacking in the speed department here. And you're not getting a ton of power. You have good power, right? But we're going to see a team in a little, little later on that has no speed but has a ton of power. This team doesn't have a lot of speed and also doesn't have like this tremendous breaking power outside of bolts 
and then Ogre Pond without its tear, it's still really strong, but it really wants to set up. So um, I feel like take some of these low guys like Cloth and maybe Excadrill or Corviknight and combine it into either one more good guy or two really type synergistic speed tier guys to really balance out this team. Because it's not so much that this team is bad. Like, this could probably still make the playoffs as is because it yeah. does have variety. I just feel like it's a really suboptimal use of the extra resources around the really strong guys. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, yeah, just having, having those extra guys that just don't really fit the speed tiers very well don't really fit the type matchups very well um definitely definitely breaks it down a little bit um yeah i think it's not it, and again for for team building purposes for people listening it's not that like cloth and a lowland executor aren't good in a vacuum but on this team there they could be something else that supports the better things so how is cloth or a lowland executor supporting ogre pond water is my question and if we combined those in, and Excadrill into something that like supports this, breaks for it, uh, a pivot for it, that's how we're going to win consistently instead of just winning through random funny cloth set. If, you, if that's your goal, to win through random funny cloth set, okay, I'm down with it. I'm just speaking optimally. I think we could utilize the points better. Yeah, and with that, we move on to the number 10 spot, which is... The Boston Bulbasaurs. So this was the Golden Go champions who got relegated down to Neon this season. And uh, they obviously stuck to their mascots. Number one and two, Golden Go Bulbasaur. Uh, Golden Go definitely round and worthy pick. Um, Nemon is very, very good. Uh, but looking at the rest of their team, like they got, they have Golden Go, Enamorous, um, like Curum. All of those are, are very, very good. Uh, you're, you know, you got your... Uh, fairy steel dragon core crocodile as your uh like rocker is also really good it can be scarf with like moxie and and like clean up and sweep things um it can also just be again that that kind of bulkier um rocker set that can uh kind of break a hole in a few things if it really wants to um having manaphy there as well uh as your only water feels a little bad because it's not the bulkiest obviously uh, was it base 100s all around or base 110? Yeah. Something like that. Wow. Um, yeah, having having that as your only, like, sort of bulk feels a little bit bad. Uh, but obviously, tail glow sets are, are very, are very threatening. Um, being only base 100, though, it does kind of get uh, outshined in the speed, and it can uh, be pretty easily killed by something else. But I do like your terror captains and Golurk and uh, PZ. Uh, I feel like PZ can be, can be something that's really, really good, especially with, like, Scarf. Or, uh, or specs with adaptability. That, that stuff is really strong. Um, Golurk, seeing Terra, I feel like that finally makes it something that can really take uh, advantage of no guard. Because um, its bulk isn't terrible from what I remember. Um, but being able to get out of that bad typing of Ghost Ground and be able to um, really hit things hard with like no guard, dynamic punch, or even like Terra Blast flying... Um, gives us some really nice options and then obviously there's that that skeleton urge that just eliminates uh almost any and all setup that can go against it uh in this team makes it it good but the pieces together don't synergize all that well like you have you have some good really good pieces i just don't know if they really synergize all that well as, as if like you really want them to so this is the first team that utilizes the points in the way I think most of us would recommend in that there's like seven or eight-ish really good guys and then a couple of 10-point guys or low-point guys. Um, the biggest issue with this team, because it's extremely talented, right? This is like Golden Go, Manaphy, Skeledurge, Enamorous, Kiram is really, really good. Yes. The issue is... Only one thing on this team has any type of momentum move at all. Every single thing is stuck on the field. Yeah. Except for Manaphy. So what's going to – and from what I remember about champions, they don't switch. So maybe this was intentional. <laughs> but these things are either attacking or hard switching, and that's it. And so why that matters is because now you're significantly more prediction reliant and your move sets have to be built quite well because you have very few uh, – free click moves 
yeah. in a sense that you can't keep momentum up and put them in a bad position. It's easy. It's easy for you to get out of position essentially. So what happens sometimes when things like that, like say you have, I don't know, uh, skeleton, not skeleton isn't that bad, but something else out. Like you have Enam out, right? And it gets a kill and you feel really great about yourself. It's choice scarf Enam. They just bring something in that, uh, forces that out. You go into something that can't pivot out. They set up on you and then you lose. It's just, it, you can't think many moves ahead with this. It's really just like one-on-one -on -one Oonga Boonga, which with these guys could be pretty good. But like me, I think a lot of the, uh, like the higher players we have here would agree. Like you want multiple things that can get in and off the field because it makes your positioning better and makes it less likely that you make do that. It makes it less likely that a dumb decision you may make will lose you instantly the game. Right, so we have essentially no pivots here except for possibly Manaphy. The other thing is, is we're capped at, uh, I think Enamorous is 106 speed, which is slow. Yeah. So it's very, very, it's very, very slow, right? Um, Enamorous is a classic choice scarver on teams like this. So for whatever reason, teams that have Enamorous, at least in PBO, a lot of times end up being slow. So it kind of gets locked into that choice scarf set. Porygon Z is kind of a classic choice scarfer. Kirim is a pretty good choice scarfer. Gold, Golden Go is used that way a lot. Uh, but you don't want them to have to be that. Yeah. So that's going to be another issue. Um, you could debate, you could move back and forth this in Kaborka, the one before it. Mm -hmm. um, I think this just has overwhelming talent, but uh, you might be better served going out and getting one fast guy. Even if it's just one, one 120 guy, just to keep people honest. Yeah. Um, and then a pivot, but just like power wise, this will probably win a couple of games, two or three games, just because Kiram Enamorous Golden Go is really, really good. Yeah. All right. And, uh, then with that, we'll move on to a team we'd aforementioned before the Ottawa Dawn fans. When you look at power, but you look at speed and you think, dang, this thing hits like Ray Lewis. But has the speed of uh, of me, yeah, yeah, of a 350 pound center. Um, this is that team. This team looks like it's going to hit like a freaking truck. The only problem is that this truck doesn't go above 60 miles an hour. The highest this truck doesn't go above 20 miles an hour. <laughs> the highest speed tier is 95 on this team. So I could see a lot of Trick Room shenanigans, especially with Glowking being one of the best pivots in the game, being able to take a lot of hits. However, Trick Room in singles feels really bad. Um, like, it can work, and it can feel really, really good when you pull it off, but a lot of the time, you're like, man, I gotta, I, I think Trick Room looks really good this week. Unfortunately, the only mom that sets Trick Room is Slowking, and it doesn't look good offensively into this team. So then it has to pivot out, and then you really only have about three turns maybe in which case they can probably just pivot around and kind of stall it out the one uh redeeming piece about this is that they have glow king backs which on its own will probably win you at least three games for teams that either aren't prepared or don't have the pieces um to truly prepare for this uh, especially because you have good, the good the good bulk pieces of like Iron Hands, Toxapex, you have screen support with Clef Key, um, you even have webs with Mask Rain, which is like, you know, it helps this team, but because it's so slow, I don't know if it helps it all that much, especially with teams that have some really good removal pieces. Um, or a team could just spam boots if they don't feel like they need items. Um, and then it's just kind of like, ah, yeah, I set webs only for it to not matter at all. Um, However, the offensive pieces are really good. You have Iron Hands, uh, which is really, really strong. You have Bax, Hydreigon. Those two are going to force a lot in and of themselves. Hydreigon can be a good uh, a good scarf piece. feels a little bad um, whenever they have something that can uh, uh, take it out. Like a strong Psychic type would be really good. Uh, Terra Poison, I think, is really, really strong on this. Uh, it's not weak to the usual like fighting types that could also switch into it. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh... And then you have Toxapex and, and stuff like that. Sawsbuck can be pretty cool. Uh, Serene Grace with with some webs up, if a team is prepared, could could do some uh, some really cool shenanigans. Uh, but other than that, if this team was faster, this team could shoot up so far in the power rankings. 
but because it doesn't have the speed, unfortunately, it's stuck down here. And who knows? Maybe the pilot bumps it up, but I, because it's so slow, I, I just don't think we can put it much higher. Yeah, this will definitely win some games, and it's one thing like we sometimes we talk about in this the, these power ranks. Like we'll mention teams are slow when they have like top is like one ten speed. This is like maybe Hydreigon is like ninety eight or ninety three or something. Yeah, but everything here is under a hundred, which means like anything decently fast, can, like Dragapult against this team can run full bulk and still outspeed everything easily. Yeah. Like the majority of the fast things are running maximum HP and attack and still going first. Um, and I I talked about there's a hard trick room team that's obviously a hard trick room team in Stargazer, and I talked about that in that video. But even on something that's supposed to be a dedicated hard trick room team, even in doubles, you'll see this. They never run just that. There has to be another mode. There has to be something going on to keep the teams honest. So um, typing-wise, it makes no sense. But in the free agent pool, say there's a Weavile. If there was a Weavile on this team to clean up the game at the end, like say you want to run the trick room thing, you get it off, you get Iron Hands, gets one and a half kills... Baxcalibur in the snow trick room gets one and a half kills after an SD, something of that nature, right? Then uh, you bring in cleanup crew at the end with Weavile. Here, past Baxcalibur Ice Shard, we don't have a cleanup crew. We're a hundred. We're essentially a million percent locked into Choice Garp Hydreigon or Hasuian Type Lotion. And um, if we're trying to be a webs team, we should have drafted Golden Go. Uh, because, like, Hasuian Type Lotion is fine blocking it, but it's still not, like, great. It's a decent pokemon but it's not it's not a big bulky thing it has no recovery it's not going to stay around for a long time right yeah um so uh i i don't mind terra hydreigon but i feel like if you were going to pull something from the 130s like galarian moltres i think gets more value from it i think you can just run hydreigon as hydreigon i don't know how much better the terra actually makes it i'm not saying it doesn't make it better i'm just saying in terms of impact with some of these other guys that could get it if you wanted to invest that many points into it. I like just just because I'm looking at it. Galarian Moltres I think gets a lot better. A Zelf I think just because it becomes not psychic gets a lot better. But um, and then we have double Dragon Week to Fighting and Fairy, and like it's just a lot of type overlap there. I don't love Klefki. Klefki also does have Trick Room, so it's not their only setter in Slow King. Klefki also has it. Um. But Klefki's a good Pokemon, but I don't like it as the only Steel and the only Fairy. Like, I feel like it needs some help. And then, like, you didn't use your uh, Terra. I don't know what they are in Masquerade. It doesn't really matter to me. Like, I'm not counting that as, like, yeah. a defensive piece. So you didn't bring in, like, a big, bulky dude with a shitty typing that could also be Steel fa Fairy. Um, like, uh, like Reuniclus. Like, something like that. Reuniclus, Belly Bolt. Like, something like that to back it up. So we have this team. This is the highest team we have. It's essentially like badly built in terms of traditional draft, but it has so much firepower that this must win three games. It has to. Yeah. Um, and also, like, Glow King's the best pivot in the game, and Iron Hands can. Uh, Glow King best slow pivot, right? Yeah. But past that, I wish we had more ways to get hands and backs on the field. Like, one more way. Like a Lando T, a Primarina something another slow pivot or maybe a fast pivot or uh we have two decent slow pivots so iron hands i think his best sets don't have volt switch yeah so um like if toxapex was read was it, i toxapex and glow king feel a little overlappy to me yeah they like they do. feel um like maybe toxapex toxapex could definitely be another water like from 120 um even just even just Vaporeon, like you could say, maybe it's a little bit worse overall. But just the fact it can flip turn out and get you back into Baxcalibur, or back into like waters come out on Vaporeon to try to block the Scald, you flip turn back into Iron Hands. Like I feel like that gives you a little bit more just like playability instead of like sameness regen, both psychic types, and our only thing off the ground is Masquerade and Hydreigon. So, and Hydreigon's Terra, probably Terra Poison. I'm not looking at it. It is Terra Poison. Uh, which has Levitate. Yeah, it's, it's got Levitate, so it doesn't matter. But I'm just, just saying, it's, it doesn't have roost anymore. It's not a defensive behemoth. 
Yeah. So um, we and might not want to stack ground weaknesses like that. Um, that but a ton of power. A ton, yeah, a ton of a ton of power. If you can find one fast guy, like he's not our favorite, but you know, Iron Boulder is there just to have a fast guy. I think it would help the team. Yeah, like yeah, and, uh, and just looking at it, uh, an offensive psychic type kind of just runs this team. Like especially after Hydreigon Terra poisons, the only resist is Klefki, and yeah. most psychic types have coverage that can hit Klefki. And like make that like punishable, um, and so just like getting something that can stop that uh, would also be uh, pretty helpful. Um, but moving on to number eight, we got the King Keldios B. Uh, go ahead. And, why, don't, why don't you start us off with this one this time? Okay, so this is a, this is I think the best bit. Now we're getting to like objectively pretty good to good teams that are well built and have like a a, a, a coherent strategy right mm -hmm. so uh the top five of this team i really like i love primarina uh i know we don't put it in more points but it's like oh every draft primarina works on every single team like it just does something yeah Tinder Ace, a huge deterrent to hazards like you see it you just like well is there a point to really doing this um, I think Metagross is really good. Bullet Punch is gr is great priority. It's so strong now with Heavy Slam and Psychic Fangs. Good AV set. It's a good rocker. Um, the, the weakness policy set usually gets a win a season. It's a really annoying. Uh, Petrarunt is an incredibly annoying physical wall that invalidates really good guys. Like, you just have, like... Um, you have gouging fire and you're like well it can't be petra unless it dds three times so i'm not gonna bring it that's a real thing that that's happened to me yeah like it's it's it really is good right uh and great tusk is great tusk right like i i don't love great tusk as a centerpiece for a draft without a lot of offense around it so maybe that could be an issue here because we have a lot of solid offensive pieces but nothing like op yeah. So then we're really relying on Tusk as the breaker all the time, which is not bad. Like, it's still Tusk, but yeah. just not my favorite thing. I know a lot of people really, really like it. It's just not my favorite thing, but I'm in the minority there. I'll put that out there. The issue for this, for me, comes that after the first five guys, I, I don't really like it. I, I've used Alecky multiple times. Everybody's going to be like, this is your championship guy. I like Alecky, but, like, he's up add-on on the draft. Like, he's not even, like... He's almost doesn't follow the rules of Pokemon. He's like this own weird thing that is spin, but yet you don't really want to do it and literally cannot hit one type that has any spadef. Yeah. Um, and then everything after Alecky, Appleton's a fine Terra Captain. It fits into that role of it was good in the old rules, but in this rules, you could be doing so much more. Like you could be doing so much more than Appleton. Like yeah. literally, uh, like, we, we have full guys here. There's got to be a better way to use this Terra. Like, if you want Appleton, you have 160 possible Terra points you could be using. Go get an OP guy. Make Tornadus the Terra Captain. Like, oh, make you can. Down. Make Tornadus the Terra Captain if you want to keep it, right? Um, so that's why this is down here, essentially. Is there's got to be something better you can do with these last four or five guys. There ha I, I really have to go in and look, but there's good guys available that you could do something with um and it's got to be it's got to be better than these last five guys yeah i i do like appleton it, it can fill a few niches with terra like terra steel terra yeah. water obviously are really good terra yeah Barry. that's the one i i'm not a keep appleton like i i mean it sucks that it's the dragon type yeah but yeah keep appleton it's the other three lichen rock midday which is a pure rock type that's not the good one yeah. Like, everybody, make sure you look at it. This is not the Dusk one, right? Zorark, um, it doesn't, like, it's not a dark type that you want as your dark type, right? This is yeah. not stopping Spectrier, yeah. right? So, um, and then Tornadus is just, I'm sure it's a speed tier. I've drafted Tornadus last as a speed tier also. Yeah. But I just, there. then I'm serious. Make Tornadus the Terror Captain then, so it's, like, got real offensive pressure, can hit the moves. Um, I just, there's got to be something better you could do with this. Because the top's good. The top is good. Yeah, the top the top part really really does look like really really good. And I do like I do like Eleki. Um, it just uh, as as you said, it kind of just is an anomaly. 
amongst everything else. Um, like it's it's really good at what it does, except for spinning. Um, but like it can it can set screens. It can then go boom, get things in. It can it can like if if no team has a has a ground type, like a few of the ones we saw previously, and they're in the, either those Terra captains are forced to be Terra ground in order to stop Aleki, or if they're just trying to outpace Aleki, it will not work. Aleki will run your team. But if it does have a ground, it's almost like Aleki just doesn't exist to that team. Because, like, sure, it can it can set screens, it can go boom. But if they have a way to remove those screens or a ghost type to prevent that boom damage, then it, it just kind of does nothing. Um, and then I, I think definitely reutilizing the Terras, either moving it out of Tornadus or dropping Tornadus and maybe, like, I don't know, Zorwark and getting, like, a really, really low point guy, but getting a higher tier Terra guy that can like do a lot a lot of work and be able to still keep appleton and maybe even like get another low point um captain that can yeah, do good so, on defense like would be really, yeah really 4b good. just because i'm looking at this right now i'm assuming that the tornadus is here for speed and to be something off the ground get a zel just get azel and you have the points to make azel for your terror cap it makes your team so much better yeah um terra so fairy azel just as an example, like there's, there's just, be I just think there's better stuff out there for this, for this squad because it is good. It's yeah. so close to being good. Yeah, Azelf has so much it can do with Terra. Like it can be Terra, it can be Terra Fairy, it can be Terra like Fire. I've seen Fire be really good. Obviously, anything that invalidates a ground weakness, so like Terra Steel, Terra Electric, when you have no weaknesses. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with Azelf that that's Terra that that does really good. It fits your speed tier well as well. It takes over that Tornadus role. Um, and like I, I honestly uh, dropping Lycanroc midday, it is one of your only form of hazards that isn't Metagross or Great Tusk, um, and it can do it can do some really funky like hazard shenanigans with like Stealth Rock, Focus Sash, Endeavor, and stuff like that because it has a good speed tier. Um, but I think there are other things that will probably do it better, and especially with Terra, I think there are other things that can utilize those points better and just be better offensively because that is one thing that I feel like you kind of need to alleviate Tusk of is being that offense. Cinderace can also be offense. It can be banded, which hits really, really hard. Um, but it doesn't like to always be banded. It likes to sometimes run boots, court change, be that pivot, be that guy that can really stop hazards. Because um, otherwise, it, it just is, is kind of locked in and the hazards kind of kind of mess it up. Um, but, uh, and, uh, and having Metagross as one of your other offensive guys... It, and having it not be very fast like obviously that agility weakness policy set yeah that'll win you a game or something this season but um overall having having most of your speed be, be kind of slow or your offense be kind of slow it, it feels kind of bad and having azelf be there over like tornadus uh per se yeah one really one other guy also thunderous is also 130 and cantera it's only 20 more points than tornadus you could have thunderous uh not the Therian one the other one the fast one which can also still be a really, um, really good offensive threat. Yeah, and it's got Terra. Terra flying thunderous. Yeah. All right. And then move on to the Carolina Titans, sitting at number seven. Your classic terrain team. Rhythm Sneasler, Heatran, classic core. Then you got uh, Terra Yuxi, which I think is going to be a demon here. Um with that uh, defensive backbone along with Galarian Weezing, you have your special, you have your physical. Um, Heatran definitely looks more like a a offensive piece in this, which I think it is better at doing anyway with Specs or Scarf. Um, then you have your hazards with Samrot, which Sneasler and, and Heatran and things like Dragonite can can really appreciate, especially if Dragonite's gonna be like banded E-Speed. Um, it can be really cool. I really like Terra Electivire. Electivire itself isn't very good, but getting a Supercell Slam really, really helps it giving a good electric physical move um but also just terror blast will work in the exact same way if you really want it to um but i do like it as a as a offensive piece that can that can go kind of crazy uh, especially if you are able to switch it in on an electric move get that speed boost which it desperately wants then you can like bulk up on a, on a switch out and then you can you can go you can really do things um but overall i think this team is pretty well constructed um I think it has all the pieces that it really wants. I just don't know if it can stand up to the power or maybe even some of the speed that the other teams have. Because outside of Sneasler, your team is pretty slow. Yeah. Um, 
which does suck. But uh, overall, I think it I think it can be really really good, and I think it has the pieces. I just think it, if it was a little faster, this team could be one of the like top three. So when I see these guys, these are all these are a lot of guys that I really like, and this is a really balanced team. So Dragonite is just kind of chilling, hiding in the middle of there. Mm-hmm. Dragonite is still crazy, guys. Like I, some people for some reason don't think this thing's good. It's great, right? Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully they don't get caught up in always trying to run on Burn Sneasler because it's most of the time it's not the best set. It fits well with Rillaboom just because that's a threat, and Rillaboom is so individually strong. That it works on every team. Rillaboom is one of my favorite guys. Um, Heatran, just don't always run it defensively. Like, it's not as good in draft because four times a week, this is matter a lot more in draft, especially on things like ground because everything has the ground coverage. Yeah. And also remember, the, the, the grassy terrain only stops Earthquake from being strong, not any other ground move. So it's not even all physical ground moves. It's just Earthquake, right? Um, earth power, but I mean, yeah, physical ground moves. No, it, it doesn't. Earthquake. Earth power is still full power. Really? I thought it was. I thought it no, was it's just, no, it's just earthquake. Huh. It's All earthquake. Right. Um, Hasui and Samrock, crazy guy, right? Terra Uxie could be good. A lot of pivoting here, so we can get in and out with Samrock, Uxie, Rillaboom, and Sneezler. We can position Dragonite. Um, the rem- the removal isn't great because you have Samurott. So Defog Weezing is fine, right? But we have Spin Sand Slash. I think we probably could have planned for this a little bit better. Yeah. Um, also, Sand Slash being the ground isn't great. Like, and you know, Sand Slash is an OG. I like Sand Slash, but it's not stupendous, right? Yeah. It's not, it, like, it's not devastating for your team because uh, not having an electric, I guess you do have an electric immunity and electivire if, like, if you roll with that. Mm-hmm. But um, it's not so much that you're worried about getting rolled by electric attacks, guys, because there really aren't that many good electric types in Paldea decks. Like, there's only like four. Yeah, at least that are super um, expensive. Yeah, and most of them like is that. There's only a couple that are really even threatening. It's you don't just don't want to be volt switched on with impunity. Yeah. Like that they can oh the, the Rotom can always click the scarf Rotom can always click Volt Switch on you without even thinking about it. Yeah, right? even Zapdos, which wants to pivot in a lot, take hits, and just yeah. be annoying. Especially with like things like static, uh against things like a Sneasler and a Rillaboom and a Dragonite, Samurott, like, but like Zapdos has the like balls to switch yeah. in and do that. This is a team that if it had Don Fan slotted on it would be higher. Like it would be it would be sig- it would be, be so quite good. Um just when I'm I'm looking at this, so Electivire is interesting. The only thing I'll say is that you have 190 Terra points to use, and you could have Terra de Dunsparce, which I think is re- is could really be quite good. And you don't have to drop anything to get it. Like you you actually have the points to keep Uxie, mm-hmm. um, if that was something you were interested in. Also, if you want like. You want a better spinner, and I feel like having Sand Slash as the ground is like not having a ground because you're not going to bring Sand Slash. Yeah, that's like not you're just you're not. Either. Yeah, you're not gonna bring this then. So maybe you just go get Serena because it's there. Uh, it is it is type overlap, but you have a Heatran and a Dragonite and a Hasuian Samurott. So like fire moves aren't that problematic for you. Um. And if you're carrying the Electivire, like, there's not that much flying offense to to threaten these things. But I don't know. And look around to see if there's something else. I'm just seeing that because that's, like, a classically reliable guy yeah. that also kind of benefits from the terrain. Because those are some big power whips coming off of that uh, attack. Um, or you're just going to be running a, a lot of boots and hoping your spikes beat their spikes. But other than that, yeah, I like the team. There's a big speed gap there, right? So it's 120 down to like, I don't even know, I wanna say 85 80s. maybe. Yeah. I want to say 80. Rillaboom is 85. I think Electivire so if you, be faster than most, but yeah, it, I don't. It's it's close. If if it is, then it's the it's the same essentially. Like it's not really any real difference. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I like the team. Maybe uh. Maybe change the terror to the Dunsparce. Maybe, tr- maybe there's something you can do where if you take the terror off Electivire, I- I'd be interested to see Electivire too. But if I was trying to be completely optimal, 
maybe you turn Sand Slash and Electivire into a 90 pointer and a 10 pointer, and you get like Flygon is there, um, which wouldn't be just as another ground. Or I'm just looking through things that are in this general spot. Mm -hmm. um, you could figure something out that more fits the team makeup because I don't know. In all honesty, with all these other good guys, I don't know how often you're bringing Electivire and Sand Slash on the team with the Dunsparce, Dragonite, Hasuian Samurai, Heatran, Rillaboom, Sneasler. So yeah. that's just that's just a bit. We're getting kind of we're getting kind of nitpicky in that way. Like this is still quite a good team. Uh, there's a little anti synergy at the bot just with the removal, but other than that, I like it. I like this team. All right, and then moving on to number six. One of our fan favorite members, it's the Boston Bay Bats, Raven, with a uh, very, very solid team here. Uh, why don't you go ahead and start us off, because I know, I know you helped with this one a little bit. Yeah, so um, we really wanted to do something around Moon. Uh, Moon's a crazy guy, probably a top five guy in this format, like with what we have available. Just because knockoff is such a strong move. Um, an incredible setup threat, right? Mm -hmm. Annihilate, another crazy setup threat. I feel like our league has like gotten down on Annihilate. It always sits there for so long in the draft. This guy is crazy good and so easy to win with. Gliscor, really annoying guy, right? Spadef Gliscor. Still can be offensive, which I'm assuming with this trainer, you're going to see that come out more than you have in the past. Uh, Pheasantipity. I think people have started to realize how good this is. Like, it slowly moves up, like, the public opinion every season. Mm -hmm. uh, really solid Spadef wall with recovery, with pivoting. Uh, toxic Chain, a stupid ability. Really a stupid ability. Randomly has Technician. Yeah, randomly has Technician, which you can do some stuff with. Blastoise, really solid spinner that also can always be set up. Like, you lead this. And you shell smash, and you'd be surprised like how many teams just fold to like hydro pump EQ. Uh, Belly Bolt's one of the best old Terra captains. Um, just a really annoying guy, and it's kind of funny because people used to think it sucks, but it's slowly been becoming like people are saying it's OP now. It's it's funny, um, but it it becomes super viable. It randomly has toxic which I, as like an older player, really value, and that just beating stuff that it shouldn't beat. It used to be we would just toxic everything in the whole game. Now, just Belly Bolt for no reason has this move, right? And recovery. And Electromorphosis means, so it has base 100 special attack, roughly 103. When it has the boost, it essentially has base 150 special attack. So, on its Volt Switches, it's slow Volt Switches, right? Yeah, and you don't uh, need to be, like, you know, invested in order to do damage. Yeah. And Jirachi, you know, classic guy, another rocker for this team. We wanted to get some hazards up for Ape to protect, so that's why we changed Crown to Jirachi. We have Wish to Wish back to Annihilate. Uh, and Jirachi, all kinds of sets, right? Like classic Mew-ish, just with a slightly better typing. Not quite that move pool, but Thunder Wave. Always there with Scarf, Iron Head to be annoying. Um, all kinds of stuff. Reuniclus, we, we demand to know what Reuniclus does. This is... <laughs> I, I said in the draft, this is the Kingpin's Memorial Necrozma pick. We're going to see if Reuniclus is good or not. Uh, Karkol, pretty, maybe the best 10-point guy, just because with Terra, this thing's pretty bulky and is a thing you could bring. Yeah. Um, it's not a do-nothing thing. Spikes and Stealth Rock and Flame Body and Spin, Will-O-Wisp, pretty good stuff. Cryo, everybody knows I'm a fan of Cryo. I think it's, like, unironically okay. And not as a spinner, just, like, ice offense is good. Speed is good. Special attack, pretty good. And um, levitate and immunity. And I also like Electrode. Like, I've used Electrode non-Terra, again, unironically. Um, if you play it aggressively, the fact it has taunt. Like, Aleki's better than this. This is similar to Aleki. Except it can do... Uh, it has a slightly more disruption with taunts and just some annoying stuff it can do. It's obviously not as good, but it it's, can do some annoying things. And there's that annoying 150 speed that can outspeed things with some bulk. Um, so yeah, like this team is more of like a, a player's team, is that we're just going to wear things down, it's going to set hazards, it's going to try to clean up with Moon or set up with Moon Annihilate, and then just play better, essentially. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, if I was going to talk about, so if I was going to talk about what's lackluster with this team, just why it's not higher, the immediate damage without choice band moon is a little bit lacking, and it's uh, we don't have too much special offense. So reuniclus without setup, uh, belly bolt without investment, and uh, it's not too specially strong. So we might be mapped into special Jirachi a good bit. Um, or without setup on Blastoise, but we, we can work around that, but, um, and it's a little bit slow, so we don't have anything, ex I don't even count Electrode as a speed tier, because it's so fast, yeah. so we go, like, 119 of Moon down to 105 for Cryo, which isn't bad, like, it's not really a gap, but we it'd be cool if we had one more fast guy, but there was no way to make it work. Yeah, um, I definitely think the, the special presence is lacking a little bit, and definitely the, the physical, uh, immediate damage isn't quite there, because obviously you have Moon, you have Ape, but Moon, without Band, kind of wants to get at least one Dragon Dance off, which which can be, like, very easy to, to do if you're positioned right and things are broken, uh, you know, as as, a, as this team wants it to be. Um, but most of the most of the other things are, like, kind of setup guys. They need that one turn to really get that that boost. And then this team just goes, and it, it goes really, really fast. It works really, really well. Um, I do think that that top, like, five is very very good having jirachi to complement that as well is very good um being able to just kind of like either be annoying um which you know might lose you a friend or two here or there um but being really annoying or just being able to be that sort of defensive support piece which i think it is also very good at doing with the backing of the other pieces you have i think this team is definitely very synergistic the the removal is kind of lacking a little bit obviously there's blastos to spin which is like you know a, a pretty decent spinner um but usually you like to have one that is a little bit better because blastoise it almost it almost wants to be offensive most weeks um especially on the special side but it, it definitely can be uh very bulky and do and do good as uh a bulky option as well especially if you want to run like a jiraji offensive then you know you can kind of put blastoise back in that defensive slot along with gliscor and have blastoise try to be your like special wall or, or fez can fit that spot as well and then gliscor be your physical wall there's a lot of options for a lot of different things to be um what they want to be but in, in terms of like getting going this team is is one of the, the slower ones that what needs with its threats to have a turn or two turns to to get going but once it does it, it's going to be really, really hard to stop. And so then with that, we will move on to number five, the Detroit Zoroarks. And, and earlier we mentioned a team that has a lot of star power, but no synergy. But this team is the team that has the star power and it has that synergy. Um, Looking at uh, Garchomp, Spectre, Deoxys Speed, um, those are some some really good guys. Deoxys Speed has seen some some down years in the PBO ever since it's it's come in. Um, the first season it was introduced, we banned Plot on it, which was a little silly. Uh, so it didn't allow it to get to its full potential. Kind of most times slot it into like a hazard screen type of guy, um, but like things like uh you know mandibuzz scissor mandibuzz there to uh help protect spectre which is really really good um scissor there to help uh kind of back up garchomp as well um and then deoxys speed to either be an enabler or be a threat in and of itself volcanium with terra i think is going to be a menace i kind of wanted to use it this season i just couldn't quite fit it on my team but this thing i think is going to be very very good and then don't don't slack on paldean tauros or uh Bastiodon here. Bastiodon without Terra feels kind of bad. I don't think it'll come to many games, but if it if it did have Terra, I think it could be really, really good. I think it could be a good, like, iron defense body press, um, kind of late game uh, once the threats are gone. Just Terra set up and then just stay there and win. Um, but Hisui, Navalug and, and Tauros are, are good. The one thing that kind of is lacking here is, is hazard removal. Obviously, Mandibuzz is one of the best hazard removers in the game, um, but Hisui, Navalug being your spinner, is not great especially for a team that has garchomp uh on it which can set i believe both rocks and spikes um just kind of bad so especially because spectrier and, and things of that nature want the damage on on things after hazard chip so that does feel a little bad but otherwise this team looks looks very very strong and has a star power to, to do a lot of things 
Yeah, so this obviously has DO speed and Spectria, right? So that's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, what's the... The majority of... I agree with pretty much everything that Solo Leo said. So what? why is this not higher? Like, you see these top three guys, and you're like, wow. Um, this is almost too top-heavy, even for me. So me and Alakazam's in the Stargazer video mentioned the eight good guys theorem. This only has seven. Uh, I don't think Paldea and Tauros, Avalug, or Bastiodon are really viable on a week-to-week. -week. Like, maybe one time you bring these guys, right? Yeah. Because um, Volcanion is so much better of a Terra than Avalug, and even if you Terra the Avalug, it still kind of folds to every special attack in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do something with it, but again, when you have this build where you have seven really good guys, can you ever really justify bringing Avalug? It's it's incredibly challenging to do it. Um, so the other thing, so our top three guys, as we mentioned before, like we really want momentum generation. All of these, De Deoxys Speed has teleport, and you can run it on specs sets. And you can run it on any set that you want, but like this isn't really this this Dio Speed on this team isn't really set up to be a teleport Dio Speed. So Garchomp Spectre and Dio Speed are kind of just out there which isn't a killer but it's just it's not ideal for what we might be trying to do right so we have two pivots we have mandy buzz and scissor and then the other five of our essentially top seven are all stationary on the field two of which are kind of slow targets so another issue is we have do speed spectres fast as balls right like just fast as anything garchomp kind of mid middling in generation nine standards so 102 i believe which is fine but it's not even in that like 110, 115 range. And then you got really slow guys. Like Volcanion might be 70. Maybe Paul Day and Tauros is like a hundred. I don't remember. But I'm not even counting that. Yeah, I'm I'm just I just don't view it as viable. Like I'm just I'm I don't think that it's a guy. So um and I get we could do some trip trick room shenanigans with Dio Speed, which sounds panathetical, but it is something that people have done. Mm -hmm. So uh with Enam Therian or Volcanion. But we have this here strictly based on how good Garchomp Spectre Dio Speed should be. But there is some anti synergy here, as Sogaleo has mentioned. So we have two extremely good hazard setters in Speed and Garchomp. But realistically, our only removal is Defog. So Scizor also has Defog, and Manny Buzz is an extremely good Defog role, though, as somebody who's run Manny Buzz a lot, you really don't even want to run defog on this thing. Like you want to be U-turn, foul play, roost, toxic, or something like that. Brave bird. Like a lot of times the defog really or knockoff also. You you want the utility. The defog really hurts Mandy Buzz's viability if that's what you're using it for. Um, so similar to Scizor. Like you really want to run ban Scizor, set up Scizor. You really don't want to run defog on this guy. So, but I think if you're if you're actually bringing Hasui and Avalog in this level with these with the, with the level of tear we have I just think like it's a suboptimal build so um this might have actually ended up being too top heavy but because of the power level if this doesn't make the playoffs it's a like it's it's an upset right but I could see a world where this the team chemistry on here is not high like in real world standards like this is like a I don't know Lakers 2014 situation. A lot of talent, but just something wrong in the locker room over there in Detroit. Yeah, and so with that, we will move on to number four, which is my team, just out of the top three. And uh, I will let you take it away with, uh, with what this is. Okay, so we have a Blood Moon team. So the first thing I'm going to look at for a Blood Moon-based team is can we get Blood Moon in? And we have Zapdos and Empoleon. So this is a tremendous defensive core in and of itself. Uh, also, relative can be fast or... So Zapdos can be fast or slow pivoting. Zapdos U-turn and Volt Switch, so it can't ever get blocked from coming in. Um, so what's coming in on Zapdos? Dragons or Grounds, U-turn out. Neither one of those in general, especially the Grounds, are threatening Blood Moon. So that's pretty safe. We have Empoleon's out, right? So Empoleon is a great partner in general for Ursaluna Blood Moon. Like, coming in on the ice attacks or the water attacks, the special ones that want to KO it. You come out on the water, 
they switch on you, you flip turn right back into Blood Moon, right? So that's what we're trying to do with a Blood Moon team, essentially. And then what else do we need on Blood Moon team? Blood Moon is not going to sweep most of the time. Sometimes I think the calm mind in trying to sweep is a bit of a bait set. Um, so we're really trying to break in the mid game or even the early game. We lead this sometimes and then we try to clean up. And for cleanup, we have Blaziken, classic cleaner, right? You throw it out at the end of the game, you protect and you attack. Uh, we have Scarf Gengar, cleanup or mid game breaker to combine with Blood Moon. And we have Terra Zarud, who's probably the best. The, I still think Sarah Ledge is probably better, but Zarud may be more versatile. So, and Zarud also can switch on and off the field, so it gives us more pivoting into Ursaluna Blood Moon, right? Uh, Cycles are a very strong spinner that has some offensive capabilities, extremely fast. Regenerator, again, another pivot. No Shed Tail, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. No Shed Tail Blood Moon here. But, um, nice. yeah, me too. And then, uh, so all of that's very good. Like this top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is extremely good. And then the difference between this and the team that we just saw is I think this 8th, ninth, and 10th guy, while they're not outstanding, I think they're actually usable. So Terra Al Alcremi, we've seen in PBO this be very good, and I think it's becoming more of a known thing that this is something that if the opponent doesn't account for it, can easily sweep them. Because it can't be taunted, it can't be encored, and if you Terra Poison or Steal, it can't be poisoned. So it's really hard to get rid of it. It's a real thing. Uh, the downsides of this team, uh, would it be better if this was another fairy? Yeah, it would be better. Um, but the defensive uh, backbone of this team is pretty strong. In a perfect world, is there another water and or steel besides Empoleon? Yes, but Empoleon this gen with Roost is very, very sturdy. It's not easy to kill. If you have leftovers Empoleon with Roost flip turn, water move whatever it's tough it's tough to deal with right um and we have empoleon's a pretty good stealth rocker we don't have incredible hazards here which is our also other downfall but we don't really i'm not the biggest hazards guy like i don't think it's necessary it's nice to have if you're playing like chi yu or Chien Power. If there's something I specifically need to back Excalibur, like I specifically need to punish for not being boots, I will rock up with rocks. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's as big a deal. De defending against them, I think, is a big deal. Like you don't want to lose to it, but I don't think it's that like that big of a deal. I'd rather have things that attack, me personally, yeah. especially in Gen 9. So um, I could see somebody having an issue with that because I think we only have rocks on Empoleon. Um, um, I think it's Empoleon, Trap Inch, and then yeah, Trap Inch. T Spikes yeah. with Gengar. Yeah, and then we have T Spikes with Gengar. So essentially, really just Empoleon, right? Which I think is fine. Me, per me personally, I I don't view that as a, as that big of a deal. But somebody could say something about it, so that separates this from the top teams. But um, nobody's gonna have an easy time fighting this. I don't think I I like this team quite a bit. Yeah, and the only other th criticism I could I could think of is that um, Cyclosar is the only true removal um and like i think the only other removal is like blaziken with defog but that if you're using blaziken to defog i think that that coach has other problems <laughs> um but uh cyclosar is the only removal that feels sometimes a little bad but considering yeah. i'm not setting has uh, my team is probably not setting hazards unless it like absolutely needs to um and that cyclosar is really good removal in itself i i don't think that hazards are, are a super big problem and most of my things don't even don't care about hazards all that much unless it's like spikes in which case then, then we have a few problems um yeah what i what i would say again but... because this is more of a like a for the educational division if you're not you should never have no removal although i have been interested sometimes in trying a team just to see if it would really be that big of a deal but unless you're really rocks weak like again you're running chien pow your team is chien pow charizard y like i don't know something like that yeah you don't need like tremendous a bunch of removal guys especially when it's on a guy like cyclozar who would come anyway it's enough of a deterrent and against this team so sogaleo's team with blood moon blaziken zarud right gengar most of the time like if they're not attacking you you're taking such a lead that it doesn't matter yeah. so 
Um, and he has Blood Moon with Recovery, Zapdos with Recovery, Empoleon with Recovery, Cyclozar with Regenerator, Alcremie with Recovery. So, so recovery well. if, if the other team is trying to stack on him, like, if this team plays, say, the team we had, the Boston Babettes, maybe then it becomes an issue because it's such, that will be a long game. But the majority of these other teams, like, this is Gen 9. This is an offensive game. Like, we're trying to attack here. What are we doing here? This is, this is... 2024 football, not 1962. Like, we're not running the ball here. We're throwing it. Yeah. All right. So with that, we will move on to the number three team, officially cracking the top three, the BC Litlios. And the first thing that I see when I when I notice this team is holy pivot. Like, my, my team had pivots, but... Jeez Louise, this team has more, and there is a, I feel like a lot better defensive backbone um, to this team. So obviously the top eight, gouging fire treads, you know, theory and all that, it's it's a very good top, like, seven, I'd say. Hariyama is, it, it is it is a real Pokemon. It can do some real things. Um, it, it, it has belly drum, but it realistically never will because it doesn't have the like priority to take take advantage of it or um or like the the trick room to really take care of it. Not saying this trick, not saying this team can't run trick room, but it doesn't want to like almost ever. Um, and then uh, like dusk lops can be a decent wall, but it's so passive that it kind of struggles to be brought to most games because then because it just kind of sits there. You bring something in that has a little bit of recovery. And can just set up, and as long as it isn't physical to get walled by Wisp, you kind of just can win the game right off that if they're not careful. Um, and then Pyroar, uh, I I failed to sometimes recognize as a as a real Pokemon. Like I feel like it can do some things, um, but I don't know if it's necessarily going to be doing much on this team. Um, but Gouging Fire, Iron Treads, Tornado Seer, and Aloma Mola, like those four together are going to be so incredibly hard to stop. And then with breaking power of Greninja, Hoopa Unbound, those top six, just those top six can come every week and be really, really effective. Maybe swapping out like one of those with Florges just to have the fairy when you need it is is so incredibly strong and powerful that I don't know if this team really needs much more. There's, there's a, so much synergy, so much um, like uh, power here as well that it, this team is, is very, very strong. So, yeah, so we saw in Stargazer, we saw a Gouging Fire Tornadus Theory team. Is this like a core now that people are drafting? Because this is the second time we've seen this. Uh, I mean, this team is a lot... Yeah, this team is a lot uh, further up than that one was. So, yeah, we have, you know, two Regenerator pivots. Everybody knows I don't like Aloma Mola that much, but it's still... Especially, maybe perhaps in a in a less experienced division where people don't know how to take advantage of it a lot, Aloma Mola can probably be better and do more. Um, we have very good speed, two very very fast things, which means, but Greninja also having the speed means Therian can run its best set, which is probably just like AV, U-turn knockoff. Yeah. Um, Treads always a solid guy, like. Solid removal, hazards, strong attacker, speed, pivoting, um, Greninja, Battle Bond set, or Protean set, whatever you need. This team facilitates Hoopa Unbound a lot, so we're, we're seeing, I, I'm not going to say this is the first, but this is the first team I'm not going to say, oh, you could do a better tear, Captain. Unbound, what's the tear on Unbound? Because I'm not looking at it. Fairy, okay. I, I think that's good. I still think I said this uh, when we talked about Mug's team. I think maybe this should just be Terra Dark and you just attack with it. And you're just on Choice Scarf or Choice Ban and just keep clicking Knock Off or Hyperspace Fury um, and not worry about living. That's maybe what I... Especially on this team because I feel like what we're doing is we're U-turning and flip-turning into Unbound over and over and over again and we're just attacking. So it doesn't matter. Um... But, so, what this team is going to try to do is whittle things down, get hits in with Mola, bring in Unbound over and over again, bring in Greninja on something low to try to get the boost, and then at the end of the game, win with Gouging Fire, which is a great plan. So, when I can so easily see what a team's going to do, generally it's good, because uh, that's very clear what they're trying to do. We have very good sustainability. We have Wish 
from Florges, which we can send back to Unbound, which could be funny. Um, we do have a Trick Room. Unbound is a Trick Room Mon, like a classic Trick Room Mon for the Hariyama if they wanted to use it. Hariyama at 70 points seems like a lot to me. I feel like this could be something better. Um, also, like I feel like you, you should look in the 60s because you have 60 Terra points. So we, we could drop Hariyama and, for instance, grab like... I don't know there's there's pretty there's ride on here because uh, just Terra ride on would be kind of nice yeah. just because it's good. Uh, I I like Terra Zangoose. I think that brings a lot of value. Brings priority to a team that only has uh, well Hariyama Bullet Punch, Fake Out, and Greninja the Shuriken thing. Mm -hmm. um, Lantern is pretty good. Indeedy Terra Psychic Indeedy is pretty good. Braviary Terra Flying Choice Scarf Raybird pretty good. Um, there's there's better options, I think, than having non-Terra Hariyama. And when you have the points to have some other stuff here. So I, I would take a look at that personally. Um, past that, though, I do I do think that this is quite a, quite a good team. Perhaps um, outside of Unbound, maybe there's not the immediate pressure without Specs Greninja to take advantage of this much pivoting, but that's a question more than it's a statement because you could whittle things down um, because you have Greninja Spikes and Shreds Rocks, right? So overall, this this is the this is a team that's definitely a title contender. I think um, three through five, I think you could move around in most order because I do like all those teams. The top two that we're about to talk about, I feel like are on a different level. Uh, but this is definitely a championship contending team. Although I do think this bottom, these bottom three, maybe we turn this into something else, and that's what puts us over the top. All right, it's top two, and this is not number one. The Chicago Chimchars. So one of the first things that anyone always notices, obviously the top tiers: Valiant, Darkrai, Glim, and then you have Moltres, Loking. That is so offensively threatening. Has the hazards to get the chip that both of those mons want. Has Moltres and Slowking as the defensive backbone that pivot in, get these mons in to break, you know, come in, take the hits. Both have recovery. Um, and uh, like with Slowking regenerated, also gets slack off, I believe. Um, Moltres gets roost, U turn. And then you have the good utility guys like Fika Volt and Tinkaton to get webs for whatever may want to be scarfed to try to outspeed things um or to like even try to get iron leaves in with terra i think that could be pretty cool um mama swine one of my favorite guys ice ground can just run a team if they don't have any sort of answers um and then uh like with webs that can just propel mama swine even more if it just wants to banded uh it can do so many things um and then uh, Grievered, even just as a 10-point Mon, it's a ghost. It's something that can, you know, deal with normal types um, and just sometimes be annoying because I, I believe it gets fluffy or something along those lines, um, which or, or fur coat or whatever, which helps it. But this team has so much utility, great defense, great pivoting, great top tiers. This team sets its set itself apart of, from the rest very, very easily. Yeah, so like like I just said, I feel like this is on this one and the next one are on a slightly different level. So I agree with most of what so Galeo said. So let's talk about why this isn't one. Um This is a personal thing. I don't like Glamora in draft. I, I'm not gonna say it's not good, but we've never in PBO, we've never seen a team do that well with Glamora. Um so I was kind of hoping somebody would make this Terra this season. And I'm going to point it out right here on this team. You can easily change the Terra to Glamora and still have Vicavolt. Because I don't know what Iron Leaves does. It's fine. I don't think... I, I, without look, I don't have this pulled up in front of me looking at the speed. I'm pretty sure this is a speed tier. But I am 100% confident you'll get more out of putting this Terra on Glamora than Iron Leaves. But if you are going to keep the Iron Leaves, I feel like you should look through the 100 tiers and see if you can figure out something better than this. Um, 
No disrespect to Iron Leaves. Like, it's fine. I just, I can't imagine there's not something better than this. Um, the top, so we have a lot of really good, we have Slow King again. It's not Galar. I said this in the other video, but I still think any competent player with a Slow King is going to do well because it's so easy to use. It's so incredibly easy to be good with this. Um, Slow King, Moltres are good pivots, but every single other thing outside Vikavolt, so all our big offensive threats are stationary. We can't get out with Valiant, Darkrai, Glamora, or Mammoth Swine. Like, we're all on the field, which I think is slightly sub-optimal for my play style. So this is maybe uh, from a slightly warped point of view of the way I play, but I wouldn't want to have this many stationary guys. Um, and that's really, for me, what's separating it from the top. Also, um, in this format, we've seen Darkrai, I think, is the second guy, is going to be better. But we have seen a little bit lackluster play from Darkrai in the past. In that it's not quite breaking through the things it wants to. And I don't know that it necessarily... I don't think that it pairs poorly with Valiant, but I don't know that they really... I guess it helps get through the dark types that are trying to start dark rye, which could be a benefit. I, so I guess then we're running late game dark rye, which I agree with because I like Valiant as a breaker rather than the, the set at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. But then as long as we position it that way, if we try to run booster speed Valiant end game with dark rye, I don't know that that'll work that well. But if we try to run banned Valiant with scarf dark rye at the end of the game, that I think is good. So as long as we sequence it in that way, I like it. Um, but to finish up, essentially, I think the Terrors could be better. I think Iron Leaves could be something else. Because the way it's si situation right now, I think Vikavolt is just a better Terra than Iron Leaves. So I think you're going to use that and just Terra Electric most of the time. Uh, even without the webs. I just mean as a standalone guy, I think Vikavolt is is good. Yeah. Um, and I think Leaves has an awkward typing for your team. Because both of your top guys are weak to Moonblast. And so is Leaves without the Terra. Um, at all. so is Leaves fighting or is it Psychic Grass, it's actually? Psychic. Psychic grass. It's Psychic Grass. Okay, that's my bad. But, um, still, I just, I, I'm not a big Leaves fan. I just, I would just prefer that this was something else, honestly. Like, I just think it would be better. Um, but mainly for me, the, the only thing keeping this from one is... I, this one can get more out of position than the one we're going to talk about. But this is definitely a championship viable team. 110%. Oh, for sure. And then our number one spot for the Neon Division for the preseason goes to the Sydney Sylveons. Uh, Zog, go ahead and uh, start us off with why you think this team is number one. Okay, so we have Dragapult, which here is... Uh, can be offensive or support so we have big offensive threats that we can get in with fast u-turns so do dragapult there's a couple of ways that we want to use it but a lot of times we want to you know force things out with our offensive pressure and then bring other things in um i like offensive dragapult but i will we'll alternate between those two things so that we can bring in like we have lando t we have galarian zapdos and then that combination of dragapult terapagos terapagos very as we said in the Stargazer video, moving up the board in all leagues, and that this thing is crazy offensively, not just as support with spin, although it is one of the better spinners because of the ability and the longevity, um, but the move coverage, the ability to always get the setup, uh, the 120 no drawback move that essentially exacerbates its special attack way higher than it seems like it would when you look at the stats. Mm -hmm. Uh, is crazy, and then we have Dragapult threatening the only type that is immune to Terrapagos. Um, Galarian Zapdos is unstoppable, like if you play it right. I, this can't tear it. If it could, it would it would be crazy, but um, Flying Fighting, anytime you play Zapdos, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Anytime you play this, you just have to be better than the other guy, because if they, if they outplay you with it, they get three kills, and then you're done. Terra Diancy still crazy, right? The best of the old Terra captains, probably this or Glastrier. Mm -hmm. um, limited to two Terra types is probably not ideal. What are the Terra types they have on Diancy? Fairy and Water. Okay, that's fine. Steel, Steel might be better so that we can't get Toxicked, but this is a Nat deck, so maybe it's not as important. 
Um, Del Fox, I like. I like fire offenses. What's Del Fox? Fairy and fire, or fairy and grass, fairy and ghost. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I think maybe just fire would be better. Like just terrifier, because fire is not a terrible typing. Psychic is a bad typing. Um, so I might change that. Uh, I don't know why they're ghosts, because they. But whatever. Um, I I would do fire personally. Sylveon. Sylveon's become very underrated. I think it's especially in a, a newer players division. It's very easy to win with Sylveon. Mid game, you bring this in. Some things are chipped. You have the defensive Sylvia, and you combine once you win instantly. It's really not that hard to do. Um, the steel being Bronzong is on, and I like Bronzong, but again, big defensive Pokemon that gets stuck on the field, not ideal. But this is one of their only guys. Like Deancey has Baton Pass, Sylveon has Baton Pass, Flip Turn, U Turn, U Turn, U Turn. Like we're all over the place with this team, which I like. Um, we have. Very consistent access to hazards here. Diancie, Zong, Lando T, Tentacle, Toxic Spice, and just straight Toxic. Um, the last two aren't real, guys. Pikachu without Extreme Speed is not... It's fine. It might do something funny in one game, but Nat Dex Pikachu is actually pretty good. Um, and Jump Bluff, you know, in theory, Jump Bluff could do something. It's not terrible. Um, but I think the top... This has nine somehow very usable guys. I think... The, the weak point, so if this team ends up not doing as well as it could, it's because Tentacruel just isn't good enough to be the water um, without recovery, and in 2024, 20, it might just not have the stats, but I still think it's okay. So we'll see if that ends up being the downfall of it, if those Zapdos points should have been spent in a water instead. Mm -hmm. But to my eye, this should be the easiest team to 8-0 with. This is the team that if something's going to go undefeated, it's this. Because it has pivoting, it has hazards, it has removal, it has immediate pressure, it has setup, it has special damage, physical damage, good Terra Captains, um, speed, survivability, all, everything you want, essentially. So um, this, this, to me, is number one. Uh, I would hear the team before it also, but to me, I like this one. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so synergistic. It has all the pieces you could ever want. It has removal, has hazards, great Terra Captains, um, all the type of synergy you could want. You know, it's got all the cores. Um, the top two pairing, even top three pairing, is like still really, really, really good. Um, it does look a slight bit ice weak, but obviously you have Tentacruel, you have Bronzong. That's not nearly as much of a problem as what it like might be on other teams. Um, even Terra Water. Yeah, and Delphox yeah. has decent Spadef. Delphox has decent Spadef yeah, and yeah. Whip. Yeah, and Delphox is there too. Yeah. Uh, it, can, it, can be a de it can be a defensive piece if, if it really wants to. Uh, but this team just has everything you could ever want more. Great power, great pivots, great hazards, good hazard control. Um, I definitely agree that this is probably the team if I had to pick to go undefeated. It's, it's this one. Um, but uh, yeah, anything else you have to say? Oh, it's tradition. What's the finals and who wins? <laughs> uh, I mean, if I had to pick a finals, I would say probably this one and and the the, the last one. Both those are just they're, they're just so good. Like even even if they have a player diff, these these teams are just so good. I don't know if it'll matter as much as what it might usually. Okay, my finals pick. Everybody already knows it. Boston Bay Bets over St. Louis Sogaleos. <laughs> That's my pick. Uh, all right. And with that. The pressure is on, ladies and gentlemen. Can he do it? The pressure is on for me and for the others who are ranked high on this list. And with that, we will be signing off with the Neon Power Rankings. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>